Hello, my name is Debbie, Allen Gator Stitcher. Welcome to Floss Tube number 38. Today is Tuesday, August 2nd, 2022. This is a video mainly about cross stitch, sometimes about what I'm reading and watching and life thrown in. Um, I haven't read or watched anything interesting in the past two weeks, so I think I'm going to skip that uh, segment at the end. Um, but regardless of that, I Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch my video and catch up on my stitching. If you're a new viewer here, welcome. I hope that you like what you see. And if you do, that you click on that subscribe button. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back and watching me again. I really love interacting with you on all of the comments and just sharing what we all are, are stitching and, and eyeing if we're not stitching it. Um, so I really appreciate uh, seeing you every couple of weeks or at least interacting with you every couple of weeks um, and I've got my door shut here because my husband is watching something in the other room but I also have a cat in the room so if I have to pause it's probably because she's decided that she doesn't want to be in the room with me anymore right now she's just circling around so um, and who knows she might actually make an appearance although I doubt that so anyhow with all that I am just going to go ahead and jump in and start showing you some of my stitching so as I mentioned in my last video I was going to have a new start and I started that. So this is from Emma Congdon's book, Cross Stitch for the Earth. This is uh, not her most recent book, but one that came out uh, more than a year ago. Um, and I know I purchased it about a year ago. So this is a piece I'm working on. It's called um, Between the Pines and it's got a quote from, I'm going to say his name wrong, probably John Muir, Muir but as you know, um, a naturalist uh, here in the United States about, uh, I believe in the late 19th century or early of 20th century. Um, so that is um, what I'm working on. And this was a new start. And normally I do start in the top uh, top left of my patterns, but this one I decided to start uh, in the bottom middle. Um, so here's where I am on this. So not a whole lot, uh, a few hundred stitches, but um, I wanted to make sure I got enough so I could tell that you know, which side is up so you can sort of read uh, his name there. Um, it's, that's in the negative right now. And uh, those th that will be filled in later, but at least when I pick this up and look at it, I'll be able to tell uh, where I am and, and not struggle because I have had that on pieces before, as I'm sure many of you have had as well. If you don't start in the same place all the time, sometimes it can be a little hard. Um, so that's where I am on Between the Pines. Next piece I want to show you is one I, sh I had not worked on for several months and then I picked it up at the beginning of this month and did some work and then I picked it up again and did a lot more work. So that is Midnight Vigil, um, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by uh, Lisa Parker and this is the mini version. And I, I got some great progress on this. Um, so I keep forgetting this. Uh, here's where I was before. And here is where I am now. So I did, um, as you can tell, I did a lot of fill in. So with the exception of a few little stitches here, which are a different color, um, I basically have finished all the sky sort of in this section and up here around the moon. I filled in a lot of the gray, which is the reflection of the cat. Um, and also started to do some stitches on the moon and did a little bit on the pane of the window. I actually had this discussion with someone and I've forgotten the word, but the, the, you know, the, the wooden pieces between the panes of the glass. So, um, making great progress. Don't know exactly when I'll be able to pick this up again. Um, cause I have other goals that I want to work on for August, but I'm hoping the next time, next time I pick this up, I will finish everything that's within the Q snap here and be able to move it. Um, and that will be really exciting because that will be the first time on this piece that I will have moved the Q snap, but I just, love the way uh, the details are popping out. You sometimes I, sometimes people get a little bit nervous with minis and you don't know how they're going to come out. Now this is you know, one central object, so not a bunch of little teeny motifs. So it makes it a little bit easier, but I just love the way the curtain and the sash and all this um, is coming out. I'm really happy with it so far. So that is Midnight Vigil. Next piece I want to show you is one I used to work on daily and I don't do that anymore. So it has been a while since I've shown it, but it is my oldest piece and it is Old World Map. Um, this is charted by Artisy and this is the large version. So here is where it was before. And here is where it is now. So 
Um, basically, I have been sort of pulling colors from here and then color completing all the way across. Um, but because I have this in 11 by 17 key snap, that actually, um, it, it was sort of getting difficult to do that. Um, and especially because you got the North Pole in the middle here. So not a lot of colors were, so, you know, I have to pull them here and then go over here. And it was, especially if I'm using this for a challenge group, it was just making it a little bit difficult because the, um, you know, if you want to take a photo and, you know, there's 10,000 stitches I could put in this space, it was, it would be hard for the admin. So what I've started to do is I've just been doing a sort of working, you know, picking a color in sort of a smaller section over here and just filling it in. So I was able to get a lot of this sort of dark color in here and then some of um, sort of the gold colors in the, uh, the ring around here. Now that you can see a better better version of it here. So uh, anyhow, and then also you can't really tell, but also some light colors as well that sort of are filling in some of the details of the latitude and longitude lines um, on the map. So but those are obviously very hard to see because I think it was like 3743 I was working on yesterday. And it makes it a little bit harder uh, to see. Um, but again, I really like the way that this is coming out. And Glad I had a chance to pull this one back out again. Next piece I want to show you is this is going to be the first time I have shown you all year, um, but this was actually a mania start from 2020. And it is, I'm sure you're familiar with this, it's Stars Bright by Landy Stitches. And here's where it was before. And here's where it is now. So basically, I'm going to start putting it behind us here. So my, my sad story was that uh, I, at some point, I used to just do this um, with regular glasses and I, um, this is a 32 count linen and I was still relatively new to working on linen and I missed, um, miscounted and either I went over three or over one as opposed to over two. And if that happens, normally I can just fudge it, but it wasn't going to work on this because it was somewhere over here. So basically I didn't have quite this much done, but I had a lot of the white, I had a lot of white done. And I also uh, had some of the colors in here. So I had, I ended up frogging all of it so that the symmetry remained. So this time I basically just filled in. I had, uh, so this white line was done, but I did all these white lines and then just started filling in uh, some of the colors here. And then uh, if these colors were here and I had not yet done them, I put as well. So I probably only put in about 600 stitches on this one, um, but it was great to pull it out again. And also, as we all know, it's, you know, frogging is never fun. And sometimes that causes us to put a piece down. And I was just happy that I finally had an excuse to um, pick this back up again and sort of cover up my mistake, so to speak, and, and redo what I had pulled out before. And I had pulled it out a while ago, but I just sort of, you know, after I did that, I sort of moved down here and started stitching in here. Uh, this was last year when I had the last time I had worked on this. So it was great to sort of say, okay, now I'm actually going to be from this point forward, actually doing forward progress on this again. So that is Stars Bright by Lindy Stitches. Next piece is another one I had worked on it this year, but I had not um, pulled it out for a while. And it is one that I, I want it done by... Uh, middle of next year for my 20th wedding anniversary, and that is O Joyous Day by Blackbird Design. Again, I think one that many of you are familiar with. So I'm trying to recommit to pulling this out so I can uh, do a little bit at a time so I can get it done um, for my, my anniversary next year. So here is the whole thing. I, um, it wasn't a Q-snap, but I pulled it out because I'm gonna, I had to move, I'm gonna have to move the Q-snap the next time I work on it. And I don't know if I said it, but here's where it was before. And here's where, uh, this is the section that I worked in. So basically, I think I put in fewer than 200 stitches, um, but basically I know that I finished, um, well, I did this whole base down here that wasn't done, put in the uh, Smyrna crosses in each of these flowers. There are actually four Smyrna crosses here, put the Smyrna cross in here, and f finish that flower. And I think that, and maybe I just finished off this, zigzag here to finish off one of the colors I already had on my needle. Um, so 
not a huge amount, but I got this sort of, I had left the Q-snap on because I knew I just sort of wanted to finish the section and just never got back around to it. So I was glad I finally got around to doing that. Um, and then so the next time I pick it up, um, we'll continue to work on that middle band. Um, that big house is in the middle there. So that is the, the biggest uh, stitching motif. I don't know if that's when I'm going to move on to directly or if I will move on to the bird and then do the house at the end. Um, I think I also need to make sure I have enough thread um, if the color I only have one skein it's not a huge huge house but I just want to take a look to see um, to make sure that maybe I don't want to buy either another skein or two more skeins to make sure that there is some consistency uh, in the house when I get to it um, again I just don't think that house is that big and but in the windows are quite substantial so there probably are fewer stitches than I am thinking um, but you know, I don't care if I think it's red pear. I don't care if my red pear in this matches flowers down here where it reappears, but I, I don't want to have a, a two-tone house. I mean, it's very gay with red, but you know what I mean. So I have to take a good look at that and decide, and I pro that will probably almost dictate that I will do the bird over here um, to make sure, uh, to, give my, to, to give myself a little bit more time to get some threads if I need them. Next piece I want to show you is... Um, Portrait of Veronica by Mirabilia. Um, so again, I think many of you are familiar with this one. And here is where she was before. And here is where she is now. So I'm very excited because I have now finished all of the one-on-one -on -one, um, stitching. In fact, excuse me, I'll see what she knows. Um, all of the um, skin on her so obviously I already you can't see she's headless right now but I have the head done up here and finished all of her skin so I am now going to start working on the areas around her um, so it's, I think this part yeah this part is all like her, her going into her the bodice of her dress and then um, this part of her dress here and the part of the reason why is this hand looks really funky right now um, I know that hands are very difficult to do, especially when you're trying to translate them into cross stitch, but it just looks really weird right now. Um, and I was sitting there going, okay, do I have to take this? And yeah, it's like almost her whole arm, but then I was holding up my hand to my arm. Now I know I have long fingers, but it really isn't that much out of proportion, um, uh, out of proportion, but it just, it looks really funky right now. So get the dress in around it and then get some back stitch in. So I think that will help uh, provide a little bit more definition for her. Um, so really, really happy though that I, uh, you know, I hit that milestone. I was working on it and I was like, I am not putting this down until I, I finish that arm. Um, and I'm really looking forward to sort of just really getting into the, the lush greens of that dress. I think that will be a lot of fun. Um, so that's where I am for Portrait of Veronica. Next two pieces I want to show are some of my, well, my two focus pieces. Um, so I show them almost every video. First one is Artisies, um, High Intensity, the cropped version. And this is based, I think, on a, either artwork or photo by Al Agnew. I think it's actually a photo, the original. And here is where it was before. And here is where it is now. So again, I'm working down. This is this is the bottom line here, uh, the bottom of the pattern. Um, so not a huge amount um, to see. Not a huge, you know. I mean, I've done a lot of stitches, but it's a lot of dark stuff. But I am starting to get into some of the greens of the leaves. So I think the last time I showed this, it was all like three ten and three three seven one, and it's just and maybe some nine three eight, and it was just really really dark. Um, so now you're starting to get, again, there's, it's the jungle, it's, this part is in the shade, so it's not, not going to be a huge amount to see to begin with, but at least it's nice to sort of see something pop out a little bit. So um, again, my goal is to get this finished by the end of the year. Um, so I've done, pull it out of the, you can see I've got that whole part done up there, you know, so most of his body and his back leg and a lot of his head. So I will, uh, my goal is to get it done this year, and I think I'm at over 66% uh, right now, so two-thirds done. So very excited about that, and again, a super easy stitch and having a lot of fun doing that. So really hope to be able to finish this one this year because I would love to get a full coverage finish. It's been a while for me. 
for that is high intensity. And then the last piece I'm going to show you is Cats in the Toy Box, um, Charlie by Heaven and Earth Design, um, artwork by Leslie Ann Ivory. So I am working in this section over here. Here's where it was before. Here's where it is now. And I've just been on a tear with this. Um, again, I work on it almost every evening and it's just been so lovely to pull it out. Um, right now I'm working on sort of some of the predominant colors in this section and so it just goes very quickly. So um, a lot of the yellow and orange in the teddy bear here, quite a bit of the red. Um, over here I did put in some of the browns here, but I was getting bored with that, which is why I finished off a lot of the colors. Finish off the blue and the clown's um, sleeve here. Um, and a little bit of that. This part is quite confetti heavy. Um, as you can see, sort of some of it up here. It's not just red, blue, but each of the, there's probably five or six blues in that and at least two to three reds uh, in that. And it's not a consistent pattern, which is fine. I think it adds a lot of interest to the design, but it just, this part does quite slow me down. Whereas doing something like in the teddy bear uh, really does actually make it go quite quickly. So it's been a lot of fun working on this and, and I'm really happy to see a lot of the uh, items in it coming out. So that is all I, uh, that's all the stitching I have to show you. Um, I did a lot of stitching um, over the past couple of weeks um, and it was really nice, especially as you know, I'm involved in a lot of challenge groups and so that drives a lot of my stitching. But this month I also, especially when I got to the end of the month, I actually hit all my goals. And I said, okay, stop worrying about what you need to do for the challenge groups and take a moment to say, what do you really want to work on? Um, and that really allowed me to pull out some things I hadn't pulled out in a while. Um, so like the portrait of Veronica, I'm doing her, you know, I just, I, I, you know, sometimes when you're doing one over one skin, I love the final effect, but sometimes it just feels like you're not making any progress in the pattern. And I said, I just want to put my head down and get it done. And that's what I did. So I'm really, really happy about that. So what are my plans for August? Um, so I do have some travel plans this month, um, so I um, will take stitching with me, but I always find it a bit hard when you're in a hotel room. To, uh, you never know what the lighting is going to be, and it's it's not a retreat, so I don't want to have to bring everything with me just to sort of sit and stitch. So I won't, I won't bring a, a magnifier or a special light or anything with me, which does then limit me if the lighting in the hotel room isn't good. Um, I don't have a clue what that's going to be like. So... Uh, we shall see. Um, so we'll, we'll see what uh, actually I do get done when I travel and how that impacts all of my stitching. Um, but uh, some of my plans for August include, um, so my whip go pieces. So I think many of you are familiar with this one. Um, this is Magic Study, the rainbow version, charted by Heaven and Earth Designs, artwork by Rose Kahn. Um, so I'm still up here like a lot of people. And I just saw on Jesse Marie Does Stuff, um, that she has finished page one. She has the original one, which is actually a limited, uh, limited, uh, limited edition one. And so that one is much more blues and purples where this is the rainbow one. Um, but I, I did not jump on quickly enough to get that. And so I got this one. I, um, kind of like the other one a little bit better cause I'm a blues and purple person, but I still love this one. And I think it's, it's my largest one right now by far with 750,000 stitches. So I think there may be a point that I will get tired of blue. Um, and I'll be happy to be working with some other colors, but um, uh, this is uh, where I am on this. So I will pick it up and hopefully start you know, just pulling in more. So that's one of my whip go pieces. Uh, my next whip, whip go piece is uh, my goal of a thousand stitches is simple little big glove. So this is uh artwork by Alessandra Adelaide. Um, so this is my starting point here. So you can see I've got a, uh, you know, lovely uh, part of this bird's tail done. And again, this one is, once I get into the rhythm of it, it is so much fun to stitch um, just because it just flows and you really see all the art coming out. And so I really am happy to have a chance to work on that one. And then I also, for full coverage fanatics, I wanted to pull out something that I, the, for their group, I wanted to pull out something I hadn't worked on in a while. Um, and it was, and the prompt was pretty broad. It's that they're, they're working through eras in history this year. And it was, I think, Belle Apoc, if I'm saying that correctly. 
uh, is the era that they are talking about, right? Or that we're stitching for this month. And it was sort of pick a pretty pastoral scene was kind of one of the ideas. And since it is so hot right now, I thought, why don't I stitch on something that's not hot um, now. I am a Floridian. I do not like snow. I think it's really pretty. I do not like being cold, but nonetheless, maybe stitching on snow will help cool me down. Um, so uh, this is a paper pattern, so it's, it's something that uh, I have to concentrate quite hard on uh, when I work on it. Um, but here is where I am uh, on this, so I will continue to work on this page here. And one of the nice things about uh, Full Coverage Fanatics uh, for this kind of challenge, it's not a counting challenge, it's not a time challenge, it's show us your start photo, show us your end photo. And if you put in 300 stitches, great. If you put in 3,000 stitches, great. They're not, you know, there's, it's not, it's just sort of helps give you a little bit of focus and not necessarily a goal, but you know, if you're sort of sitting there saying, what do I want to stitch on? Maybe this gives you a little bit of direction to choose. And then the uh, last piece I'm going to show you that I'm also going to work on, um, also another winter themed one. This is Winter Wonderland. Um, from, it's uh, from Cross Stitch and Country Crafts magazine. So this is, I believe, from September, October 1992. Lovely little scene of, of a uh, people ice skating. And this is for the magazine monthly challenge. The theme was uh, trees. And this was my only magazine piece with trees. And there's also an acrostic and I can get, uh, I get you had a choice of bird or birdhouse. I decided I didn't need to be extra this month. And I'm just going to go for the acrostic, but I was able to get all of my letters for bird. So there's kids. So there's a boy, I, cause they're ice skaters R because there's a roof on the house. And then D cause I said there was a, uh, at least some of the skaters are wearing dresses. Um, so that's where I am on this. Um, and this is this is another fun stitch as well. Um, it's actually, a, it's a 28 count hand dyed, but it's from Witch Elt. So it's, it's, I don't necessarily love their fabrics as you purchase them just as they are, um, but their hand dyed is actually really lovely. Um, it's it's really nice and soft, but it's it's easy to see the holes. This is a 28 count, so obviously that makes it easier. Um, but the colors in this are vintage, um, so maybe not uh, the, mo the some, not you know colors of the 90s, not colors of today. Um, but nonetheless, it's sort of fun to work on this and have a vintage piece. So that is it for my plans. Um, I do have um, some things I want to show you, some new acquisitions. Um, the first one I got was from uh, the the Sunshine Stitchers. Um, so I think all of you know them, EJ and Gary and Shelia. Um, they had a, a giveaway for their subscribers. And so I was very fortunate to win a prize. So I got this. Um, this is the a Sampler Antique Needlework. So this is this is an old older version. Um, and uh, it has a few patterns in here, but what's really great about this is there's a lot of specialty stitches in here and a lot of very clear instructions on how to do them. So thank you to the Sun, Sunshine Stitchers uh, for sending this and also just for all your videos because I love watching them. They're one of my go-to floss tube channels whenever they come on. Another uh, purchase I made was from uh, Paying Free Crafts. I saw this, uh, the someone in on in the pain, pain free crafts Facebook group said, Hey, is this a Chris Dunn image and can it be charted? And it indeed was a Chris Dunn, Dunn image. And within, I mean, I would say less than a week, they had it charted and available for sale. And I knew I had to get it. Um, and it's called Simple Pleasures. So artwork by Chris Dunn and um, charted by pain free crafts. And it's just a very sweet picture of. Um, two mice curled up on the couch. One's reading and one is knitting. Now I'm not a knitter, but I think a lot of people sort of had the same, you know, this is sort of what a lot of us do with our partners is we just, you know, like to curl up and spend time together um, in the winter time by a fire, <laughs> um, not right now, um, but it's just a really lovely photo. And 
for those of you who might watch uh, Ellie Welly uh, Stitchers, Elaine, she loves Chris Dunn. And because of her passion, I started looking at a lot of sort of what is available from him. And I just, I do really love his artwork. Uh, you know, he has the animals. They are so expressive. I mean, it's not just even their faces, but their little hands and everything. Just the attention to detail. And yes, they are animals, but just sort of the qualities they have um, really just bring everything to life. And I really enjoyed looking at his artwork. And I had not picked up one yet, but I did uh, decide this was one I was going to pull the trigger on and buy. And the other thing uh, also right now for those of you who are in the U.S., um, I'm sure that many of you are aware the dollar is actually quite strong against both the euro and the British pound. Um, so um, patterns are actually, uh, this was, I think, 10 pound. And that is, I, I, can't, I don't know what the exchange rate is right now, but it's much less than it used to be for years. It was, you know, I would say at $1, or sorry, um, one pound was almost two dollars, maybe one point eight or whatever. But you know, it was it was quite strong, and as the dollar has strengthened, it's actually uh, now is a time if you have if you have a little bit of extra cash to think about. You know, hey, maybe if you want to buy some PDFs from some European designers, this would be a good time to do it. Uh, so, not that was really what you know. Again, didn't stop me from buying them before, um, but you know, when I was buying it, I'm like, yeah, that was actually kind of cheap relative to what it would it would have been a year or two ago. So anyhow, that is one purchase. And then the other thing I bought, um, Maggie Kitchy Whips um, did a flip through of this. And I will link her video below. Um, and it was so much fun watching her flip through. Um, I'm not even going to try and uh, do it because, uh, describe this book, because she goes through every single pattern in here and sort of talks about it and just the detailed description. So if you really want to flip through, I'm going to go to that link. Um, but I did buy, she encouraged, well, she enabled me to buy this. So this is Cross Stitch Myth and Magic. Um, and I think the piece in here that inspired me the most, there was a Teresa Wentz learn here. Um, and, uh, and so I, I thought I should try that, but there was probably 20 patterns or so in here. Um, not huge ones, um, but, uh, but you know, a lot of, you know, sort of these, things like that. And I'll just show you the back here. I have a little dragon here. Um, but this book, uh, it is out of print. Um, it's about 20 years, 20 years old. It was, um, I just looked on Amazon and I was able to get it for about $20, which seemed very reasonable for me. Um, but I will say if it's a book that you are interested in buying, poke around. Um, because, I got it for $20 from one seller on Amazon. There were other sellers on Amazon that had it several hundred dollars. And if it's your, if something like that is your unicorn and you want to pay it, that's great. I'm not going to pay a couple hundred bucks for a cross stitch chart. Um, even something that I really want, uh, you know, like lady, the flag, I really, really do want that. I'm not paying 180 bucks or whatever the going price is now. It's not worth it to me. Um, but 20 bucks, go for it. And again, this is a used book, but it, and they say good, they said it was good condition. And I'm sometimes a bit wary if it doesn't say like mint condition, um, because you never know as some, you know, and I don't mind a little bit of writing, but you know, it's a cross stitch pattern book. So, you know, has some like, you know, it's a pattern worn. Is there, are there things that make it not good? And, and I like once bought a, it was a Spanish language, um, like a learn Spanish type book. And they said it was in good condition. And yet the quality of the pages were good, but all the answers were written in. And it's like this, you know, I, you know, I didn't pay much for it, but I was like, I could have put that in the description. Like, what, you know, I didn't need that. Um, if I'm trying to learn Spanish, I need to do it on my own. I need to read someone else's answers. So I was a little bit nervous about it and wondering why this price was so much lower than some of the others, but clearly the seller priced it to move product. So anyhow, a lot of fun. If you want to go through again, I will put uh, Maggie's link below. So that is all I have for you today. This is quite a short video, but again, it's been uh, fewer than two weeks since my last video, which probably accounts for a little bit of the brevity of this video. Um, it will probably be towards the end of August before I'm able to film again. I am, my husband and I are going on a little bit of a vacation and then I have some personal things I need to take care of. So I'm not sure when I will get back to you again, but I hope by the end of August, I'll be able to share all of my August stitching. So until then, happy stitching to everyone.